Welcome to Breaking the Vow on Strong Island Radio. This is a show where we turn pain into power and find recovery after divorce, separation, and breakups. This is where we push the emotional hang-ups to the side and create a plan to reach our best possible potential. This is where the next chapter starts and how the healing begins. So let's welcome your hosts, Teresa D. and Benny, the Life Coach. And we really, really are back. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Breaking the Vow. I am Benny, the Life Coach, and with me as always... Teresa D. So, we got some cool things going on. We certainly do. Someone had a cool little places to go, I heard. I heard someone had a relaxing time. Yes. All right. I like relaxing times. We're going to have to get into that at some point. I know. But you know what? Before we get crazy, because I could feel it coming already. Yeah. We have a special guest who I want. We do. I, we do. I love her. And we, I re, I, I'm, I'm, would you do me the honor, please, Jade, in, introduce yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Yes. Hi, Ben. Hi, Teresa. Thanks for having me. My name is Jade Bianca, and I am the dating coach and matchmaker for Dating After Divorce. I... Um, do everything from coaching to dating profile management to old school matchmaking for divorced men and women all over the states, Canada, and the UK. She yeah. is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I need you, Jade. So I'm here for you, babe. <laughs> listen, so just knowing certain secrets about friends. <laughs> when so, just Jade, question for you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Would you say an opening line might not be used if you, you probably shouldn't say things like, so what's your story? Yeah, no, don't ever <laughs> say that. So that is that is a line Teresa has heard a few <sighs> different times. What, what would you say a good opening line, a good introduction, a good way to introduce yourself to somebody would be? What would you think? So if we're speaking about hetero men to women, um, something that's very random that I think a lot of women these days, like, I don't know if you can agree with this, Teresa, or not, is mm. complimenting a woman her, on her eyebrows. <laughs> yes. I've gotten that, too. And I thought it was a little weird at first, but I guess that's what they do now. <laughs> it's different. Um, that's totally yeah, I know different. it sounds weird. I was um, like, I, eyebrows? What, what, where'd that come from? You have really nice yeah. eyebrows. You have really nice eyebrows. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Right. And I, I think there's also ways of like men approaching women um, in a non-threatening um, way. And by that, I mean complimenting them. Be like, hey, I just want to let you know that you look fantastic today. And then... Go and sit a couple seats away at a coffee shop. And that woman, if she's single, she'd be like, oh, wow. He wasn't, like, trying to pursue me so aggressively, but he was letting me know that I caught his eye. I like that. I, I've never been I a, like that. I was never a good opening No, you kind of were guy. not. Nope. I always just said hello. Okay. that You know, that <laughs> works, too. I, I, hello. I always thought hi was a good When I was younger <laughs> and a lot less mature... Not that I'm the most mature now. You're not. You're like a fifth grade boy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fun with it. Um, <laughs> I think I, I, I thought I was intimidated, to be honest. I was always intimidated by anyone that I, I liked. And mm-hmm. the opening line is, it, it, I think everyone agrees, it's difficult. The beginning, the starting point is, is, is awkward. And especially now, now we're talking about post-divorce. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you think people are most guarded about post-divorce? Yeah, I mean that's a big subject, so I'll try and I'll try and break it down a little bit more. But like most of the time, when we're getting out of divorce, we're kind of not certain about ourselves, whether that's physically or emotionally, because divorce can be such a big stab to the ego. Sure, and trauma. so it's not soul knowing soul crushing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yes. Um, and so you kind of lose a bit of yourself, for lack of a better term, in a divorce because you're like, am I still attractive to the other sex if I'm hetero? Or do people still like want to to go out with me, whether it's physically or if you can have a conversation where someone's enjoying it and vice versa? Um, so I think putting yourself out there after a divorce, especially, is very hard. It's very um, hard. Yeah. And I think baby steps is the only way to do it because otherwise you're never going to do it. Right. <laughs> you're never going to go right. out. 
Yeah. Like first it starts out with okay, you go to the grocery store. Oh my god. <laughs> I, 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 then maybe Target. <laughs> Target. I, historically, I have never been a good dater. Okay. H- historically, I always thought dating was uncomfortable. Yeah. Matching was uncomfortable to me. But I it took me a long time to realize that it was simply because I am uncomfortable. Right. I didn't. You have to be secure with you first. Well, I agree. I think what Jade said has a yeah. lot of value. Like the, you know, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, and another thing that I, I lo- Jade, that I love that you bring up is you know, if it's it, you know whether it's hetero, same sex, or otherwise, you know, relationships are very, very interesting. And when you when you've invested in someone for so long. And then all of a sudden, that investment, it like literally evaporates. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's like the gavel fell. Boom. Yeah, boom. And yeah. now, now you are thrusted into this new, thrust into this new world. Yeah. Of hopeful imp- intimacy. Not saying anything. Don't. That, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> all right. Every listen. There, there. Well, what do you think? Take it to a Starbucks. Take it to You're a sure Starbucks. You're sure to get laid. I, I, listen. <laughs> I, Again, I wasn't a good dater. I wouldn't have dated me. I would not have dated me. I'm fortunate that I don't have to worry about dating. But I, I will say that, you know, it's it's what to say. And then oh, here's a great question then. If it's not Starbucks, where do you go mm-hmm. on a first date? Jade, where would you take somebody? Yeah, where do you where go? Where would you suggest a first date should be? Yeah, absolutely. So especially during these pandemic times, if you're both comfortable meeting up in person, I think a great way to do that is to meet in a open public space, but also dating can feel like an interview. So if you're just going and sitting down for drinks or you're sitting down for dinner, yeah, see, I hate you're that. going the yeah, interview yeah, part of it. Yeah, you're going to ask those questions and kind of feel like um it's going to be like an interview. Because yeah, like there's going to be a kind spotlight of on you. Does. Like you're being interrogated. Yeah, yeah. Like tell me your story. That's right. a lot to unpack. <laughs> I hate <laughs> what's yeah. your story. But if, you, but if you kind of plan to do something that's interactive, maybe something fun, something outdoors, something like an activity, it can kind of take the pressure off. Also, if it's something that you can kind of like make fun of each other and like tease each other about, and that way you're kind of breaking down that barrier that you're like putting up when you're dating, like that yeah. front that you're putting up. So if you can That's go. That's a good thing. I yeah, like that. I'm not saying an arcade bar is great for everyone, but right. something like axe throwing or ice skating. Or... I like that. Axe throwing, You man. are not allowed to go axe throwing. <laughs> I wouldn't go because it's I am banned crap from out. all sharp objects. <laughs> yeah, no, Because I know how to use them. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can't go court order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would I would love to go to an axe throwing event with you due to restraining order. <laughs> I think I'm not allowed. I'm not you allowed. Know, but, uh, but something, Jay, there's something you <laughs> said that I really want to celebrate and, and I want to applaud. The if you actually expose the moments of awkwardness and you actually laugh at the the moments of uncomfortability and right. kind of have fun with it, wouldn't you say that they sort of lose the threat? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great way to put it too. And as I mentioned before, you are kind of like breaking down that that barrier and putting up that front um, because we always want to put fourth our best selves, but we're also not usually acting like we're on a date interview. So we're going to be a little rigid if, if that's all that we're doing. I, I think like dinner just doesn't, it's boring. Well, I, 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 I like the axe throwing idea. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, I, I love know that. you do. I am a, I'm a really big eater and I eat a lot. So like I don't think I would never my first date wouldn't be and it depends you know it depends on the person though it really does I I, I would I'm going want, to dinner tonight. Well, you have a date tonight. I do. Awesome. All right, so so all right, we're gonna be going been out, out. A, we, been we, out a, on a hundred and fifty first dates, never gets so, past there. So, <laughs> so, so so Jade, the great part <laughs> about this show is that we're gonna be going to uh, to a break in about a minute or so. Okay. So then we're, you know, we're going to discuss that, that weird, that weirdness of dating someone that you've known for a long time yes. on a first date. So 
So let's get let's we, we're gonna get the story mapped out real quick. Are you ready? All I'm right. ready for it. All right. We we've known each other a little. The person you've known a little bit. Oh, forever. Like they're over thirty years. Over thirty years. All right. We 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 we're taking notes on this one. You've known them over thirty years. Yeah. Okay. Was there a level of attraction throughout that thirty years? N no. 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 Okay. But if uh, nothing else, listen. Hey, it's you a have dinner. to be able to. You, <laughs> it's a ha you have to be able to remain friends, and you can't ever lose that. Okay. So, uh, listen, I'm a fan. Listen, it might be totally friend zoned. Listen, I don't I, know. You are one of my closest friends in the world. I, I love you, so I'm always going to be rooting too. for you. But uh, I just want you happy. I I am happy. And I want him to be able to walk home safely. <laughs> We're not saying <laughs> that anyone gets aggressive. So, Teresa, I will ask, how did you know him? Was he, like, a partner of a, a previous friend? Was he a yeah, neighbor? Yeah, I, I mean, we went to school together. Okay. All right, so wait. We got a couple of seconds. So <laughs> it, during the break, we're going to tell some jokes that we can't tell on air. Right. Then we're, during the break, we're going we're gonna to re-up, and then Jade's going to come back with some coaching techniques. Yes, which would be great. This I love it. This is going to be a, this, What a great show. Thanks for yes. coming on. This is going to be awesome. All right, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Got to pay some bills. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year, when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Rap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Rap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually... patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. It's Advanced protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040, or you can go onto their website, rap-america.com. All right, since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh, because I'm, I'm gonna be hungry, so we're gonna go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pickup and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Ooh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women Ooh. we believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity stability and respect by viewing their customers as partners any energy project you have in mind call on lighthouse energy www.lighthouseenergypartners.com 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting. Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. You're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. And we're back. All right. So as someone who has, like, literally never dated anyone that I was friends with when I was a kid, did I ever? I don't think so. No, you did. But they, I mean, they, you, you might have known each other, but you didn't really know each other. So... My childhood and my like my my younger career of like dating, I guess you'll say, 
I've been sober a very long time, but before yeah, how that, how do you go out and not drink? I simple. <laughs> it's like the I just don't first drink. thing I order. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, well, I don't, but um, I think it, it, it was odd. I, th- I remember meeting someone at, at a bar, and of oh. course it's weird because I don't of drink. Of course. And we were talking for so long, and this was years ago, and. It was so crowded. I'm like, listen, I, you got to give me your number, but I got to find my friends. Otherwise, I can't get home. She goes, come back. I go, I don't want to lose you. And it was so crowded, we lost each other. So, like, two days later, I'm in the mall. And she's, like, walking towards me, and I'm walking towards her. And you're like, this has got to be fate, right? I'm like, thumbs up. This is great. Aaron so I'm like, yeah. where did you go? She's like, I was looking for you. And I said, of course, I was looking for you. Wasn't looking so hard, but a little bit. A little bit. Then she goes, we start talking. I go, where are you from? And then she said, my hometown. So instantly, I, I felt a flush, like a, like a rush of just uncomfortable, like, if she remembers me, because we're around the same age, it's not going to be a pretty Yeah, memory. it's not going to be a good memory. Yeah, well, you know the story. Yes, so, I do. So I go, I go, she goes, well, who do you know from East Meadow, which is the town that I grew up with? I'm like, well, I know one guy. I know one guy pretty well. She goes, what's his name? I go, Ben Kimmel. Do you know him? And she goes, you know that guy? And for like five minutes, <laughs> she went on a tear about <laughs> stories about Ben Kimmel. I only really think one of them was true. What's your name? Joe Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just let her go. Let yes. her go. And she's like, but seriously, how does someone like you know someone like him? How could you be friends with him? And I'm like, hi, I'm Ben, nice to meet you. She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, but you were so little. I'm like, I'm like I fucking grew. Right. She goes, yeah, but you had long hair. I'm like, I cut it short. <laughs> and she was, she was like lost. And then she was like, oh, so am I going to see you again? I'm like, no. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I, I, I always had like this weird, uncomfortable feeling. So yeah. I'm just telling you to acknowledge some of the things we talked about. Like, it's weird when you, you knew someone for so long. Yeah. So, so now, Jade. Mm-hmm. She, <laughs> her stories aren't quite the same as mine with this gentleman. <laughs> yeah, they're a little different. She was a lot more appropriate than I. Yes. Now, okay. what do you suggest? How do you suggest she creates a strategy so she's able to enjoy this first date rather than think about too many things and be uncomfortable? Yeah, um, I have articles and articles of advice, but specifically, hopefully for Teresa, this might help, um, is looking at it as a chance to meet someone you wouldn't have never otherwise met. Instead of being like, is this person I'm going out with the one, or is he ticking these boxes or not? Oh, yeah, no, I never think about that, (laughs) ever. Well, you're ahead of some people then. Yeah, no. Um, I think that takes away some of the pressure. Um, Oh, yeah. Being able to to look at it as a fun thing as opposed to something that you have to do. I yes. think a lot of people have a negative mindset with dating, um, mm-hmm. which is justifiable because it's exhausting at times. I mean, everyone it's has a job. It's exhausting. Absolutely. Yeah. You already have a job and then you yes. also do other things on the side. It can't and be then- a job. <laughs> I don't want it to be a job. It should be easy and fun. Right. Absolutely. But we have to also put ourselves out there for the chance of, of meeting a Prince Charming, but we also have to kiss a lot of frogs too. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a numbers game when but it comes to dating. the problem is I'm feeling <laughs> like they're all game. frogs. It's true though. It is yeah. a numbers game. You do meet a lot of people in this world. And I, I, I was very closed off for a long time, but you do meet a lot of people. So a lot of crazy. Teresa, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you have a type? Is there a certain type that you're going out with? No. No? No. He just has to say, God bless you when I sneeze. I've lowered my standards. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't support that. That is not true. So we joke a lot, but yes, the one do. thing I will say, and, and, and Teresa's family, so I, I have to come out and say this. You, you are probably one of the most gracious um, people that I've ever met. And Thank you, you are one of the most loving, caring people that I have ever met. Might have a little bit of an exterior that protects the interior, maybe. Yeah. But I think I think Jade, what you're saying is really valuable. Like it's okay to step step out, 
right? And step well, out no, of that box. Well, she well she's asking about a type. Like I don't think I have a type necessarily, do I? Sometimes it takes you writing down what the past couple dates have been like to realize that there might have been a common factor between all yeah. of them. That's a good idea. I've never done that. Hmm. Yeah. I, so maybe I should start doing that. I think that's a good one. I think you should write down what you look. I think writing down, I, I'm a big fan of mission statements. Yes. So when I when so I start, What's my dating mission statement, Ben? You don't want me to write it. <laughs> but, I do. <laughs> no, because I'm overprotective. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that when especially when I start working with new clients privately um I create a vision statement you know mm -hmm. what is what do you want what do you want your next three months to look like then what does your next six months look like and, and you know longer term goals so it starts off with incremental goals and short term and then long term but I think that applies in dating or any sort of relationship because relationships vary in levels of intimacy. There's friends and there's still intimacy. Then there's someone you date and the, the level of intimacy is, is more intense, we'll say. Mm. And I do I think you have a type? I think everyone has a type. Do I think that you have, I, I, think, I think the man you would be attracted to might vary. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's some, fair. I think a person with a big heart is yes. important to you. Yes, that's very important. They have to be kind. Mm hmm. Yeah, you don't like bullies. No. Mm mm. Or rude to wait staff. Oh, rude to wait staff is the. That is the, yes. <laughs> that is my number one. Get out of my face. I'm leaving. You're like check please. Yes. Yeah. No, um... I don't even say check please. I get up and I leave. It's happened yeah. to me three times. Yeah. Um, and Ben, I do the same thing. I have a reflection journal that's free on my website. Mm -hmm. And basically it has people go back to previous dating patterns, what the good things were about past relationships and the bad things about boundaries, about vulnerability and like accountability. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times when we get into new relationships, we kind of let certain things go to the wayside we're like oh well that's that's not that important that's not a deal right, breaker you compensate for one for some one thing for another thing 100 well this is great but this isn't and because this is great i'm just going to overlook this so i think that, that's and, at least, and this is available on your website correct yeah what's um, the website jade yeah, my website is datingafterdivorce.com mm -hmm. and we have a free reflection journal um it's 45 page interactive reflection oh, journal that is so helpful that it is. even has um writing a letter to your ex to kind of close <gasps> that chapter I do not love send it. It. yeah that's great wow <laughs> can you imagine what my letter would be like i can <laughs> <laughs> i really yeah. really really can I, I wanted to give um something to those who like couldn't afford the, the coaching or the other packages and be able to like put pen to paper even though it's online right um to to kind of like close up that chapter and we're always healing and improving ourselves but like actually putting down what your core values are and what you want your partner to bring to the table okay like blindly dating and jumping into something new it just helps it's basically what i needed when i went through my divorce yes. and i didn't have and it took me years to build so yes no i think it's an like amazing it. tool it's amazing <laughs> i we are similar uh in the way we coach so when I do a lot of transformational coaching, especially with uh, in the recovery world with um, substance or alcohol abuse, and everyone has this this weight, you know, that baggage that they claim. So I, I, I offer this. I want mm -hmm. you to write a, a goodbye letter. But it's not just the goodbye letter that really get that gets people goodbye tripping. to addiction. Goodbye to whatever you oh. want to say farewell to in, okay. in your life. If it's the drinking, if it's the drugs, if it's the relationships, if it's being codependent. Okay. If it, but if it, how many times have I tried to say goodbye and it just, he won't leave? You have to be the one to walk away. But. I have. I have. Un, well, it's different because you're still kind of going through certain things. Mm -hmm. But what I also uh, promote is a letter of introduction. And that letter of introduction is you introducing yourself to the person you want to be. So I would assume, oh, Jade, you know. You have that, right, Jade? Something like it. Well, it, it, well go ahead. 
basically the beginning of my journal is building up who you want to be. It's who you are, what you want and how to get you there. And then it concludes with, with the, the letter to your past. Right. So I love that. I'm a big fan of a letter to the past and definitely a letter to the future. I right. love that. So we are going to pay a few bills. You got to take, take a, a break. break. And we're going to be back with Jade. You are the best. Thank you. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Wrap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Wrap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually... patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. Advanced so protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040 or you can go onto their website, wrap-america.com. All right. Since we have a meeting after this in West Islip. Yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Because I'm, I'm going to be hungry. So we're going to go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pick up and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www.ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Ooh, and I heard they have good chicken farm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com. 631-275-0091 located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house. Maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting, Selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact Certified Drafting. Certified Drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years. www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516-844-0420. Or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com. Tell them you heard about this from the show, from Breaking the Vow. You're going to receive a 10% discount. We love Kevin. I love Kevin. I think that's pretty awesome. And we're back. We are. So, tell, so, so Jade, let's, let's get back into Teresa. We, <laughs> really? We, this is like a therapy <laughs> session. I like this. This, this, is, this is great. <laughs> Off air, we were talking about that idea of insecurity, awkwardness. And, you know, just trying to find that right fit. Um, I think we were in, I think you and I agree on a lot of that, right? Um, what, 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 what could you say to somebody to help them weave or navigate through that? Insecurity. Yeah. Yeah, I think as, as you and I talked about while you were paying your bills, is that we all have insecurities. We mm -hmm. all have things that we're sensitive about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that recognizing that maybe your date is just as nervous as you are. Right. Is one thing to, to acknowledge. Um, also that you don't have to be on your A game all the time. Um, on the other side of this, I think a lot of the times in our date culture today, we give people one chance to impress us. And if they didn't impress us in that allotted time, we don't come back to them. Yes. And I'm a big proponent of second dates. Um, actually, my fiance and I had a terrible first date. Um, <laughs> Jade, there is hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
amazing man, terrible first date. We still talk about it today. Um, but there was something about it. I was like, you know what? Maybe like we were just both being smart asses to each other. And I think that the, I think there was something there. So let's let's try and go out again. So I suggest giving someone a second chance because everyone wants this chemistry. They want to have those sparks on the first date. Yes. They want to feel comfortable on the first date. But you're only comfortable with someone that you have a past with, that you have you have chemistry because there's a, a rapport between you. Right. And if you have chemistry and like a rapport with someone you first meet, there's a likelihood it could either burn out or he could be, he or she could be a sociopath and they're just mirroring what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> so, I know that's Unfortunately, a lot. I think I got all the sociopaths. <laughs> Every, at least 150 of them. I think dating, <laughs> I think dating and relationships or love and intimacy, I think it's a trained idea. It's the blueprint. Right. And then until you learn to relinquish that training, just kind of let it go uh, and realize that maybe all this idea of what love is or what you've been reading about what love is, maybe to you it's, it's very different. And maybe to me it's very different. I think that everybody has uh, a wealth of energy. I think that everyone has the the amazing ability to endure, to overcome, to accomplish, achieve, and succeed things. But I think that sometimes, or I've seen this, mm -hmm. sometimes we are taught that, well, you have to have the wife or the husband or their whatever you want to call now. Um, you, you have to have the house with the white picket fence and the 2.5 kids and the garage. What's a 0.5 of a kid? I, I don't know, but I always heard that and I yeah. always thought it was funny. I don't know what that is. I, 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 don't, I don't think you point can have five. a 0.5 kid. I hope not. Right. I don't know. It might be expensive. I right. don't know. I don't know. But I think that we, 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 we've been forced into this idea, especially with gender and gender roles. I think we're forced in this idea of this is what love is supposed to be. And until when you finally break away from that idea, when you break away from that mold, it it's so freeing and pretty interesting. So when I got divorced, the the moment I stood up from the you know proverbial table, we'll say, and I just walked away, pushed my chair back in, and said that was it. I never turned around. I never looked back and said, "Hey, you know, maybe that was a mistake." I knew I didn't belong there. I knew I didn't belong there. First yeah, but all, you would be so shocked at how many people stay, go back. They're at the table. They want to push the chair in, and they don't. So, Jade, why would someone go back to an unhappy relationship? Lots of reasons. I think it's familiar. I think um, yes. it's very justifiably the familiarity, scary. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, it's very scary to start over yes, financially, uh, professionally, in a relationship. It's scary as shit to start over. Yeah. Um, yeah. The monster you know very, is better than the monster you don't, maybe. Right. Yeah. It takes a very, very brave and strong person to leave an unhealthy relationship. And that's not even getting into the if there's an abusive or narcissistic person. Right. Um, so I commend anyone who who has the wherewithal to leave an unhappy relationship. I think that. There's plenty of people that stay together for the kids, but they're not doing the kids any favors. Right. You know that. You're right. Um, and I was working with a divorce coach, um, just collaborating, and she was saying, what I ask myself is, would I want my child to have this relationship? And if the answer is no, there's your answer. That is exactly yeah. what I had said to myself. And that when there was a, there was a time where, um, there was an argument and I looked at my daughter and she was just going on about her day and I remember thinking she's going to think this is normal. Right, mm -hmm. and it's not. And I would never wish yes. that on her. I Anyone. would never want her to have that kind of relationship. You know, divorce, divorce, I will say is painful. I will say mine was painful. I will say my relationship with my daughter or the lack thereof hurt me to my core a hundred percent i will i accept full responsibility for my side of the fence that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt but you know what i learned one thing i learned and i want to celebrate what jay said about having that bravery to get up and walk away yeah that I, takes 
everything. Yeah, like literally, it's like it's like getting kicked in the face and then trying to stand up. Yes. I mean, it really is. You got the wind knocked out of you. Yeah. You're, you're worried about finances. You're worried about who's going to think what, who's going to say what, who's going to be on your side, who's going to be on their side, which it shouldn't be. But, but it is. It is. It definitely is. <laughs> it, it, it's, I wish it's, it wasn't, you know, but yes, you're right. You know, I, I, two, two uh, good friends of mine just got divorced. And I knew, I knew the woman before I knew the man. Um, but they're friends. So I, I, to each, sent a message saying, hey, I'm really sorry. Um, I, you know, I wish you both, you know, I just... You know, you guys made your choice and, and uh, you know, kind of wishing them the best. But when I, I, I also sent the same message to the man who I knew for less time, much less time, but we became friends. So I, what I told him was, I said, listen, when I got divorced, I remember people telling me, listen, man, I can't really hang out with you because my wife doesn't like the fact that you got divorced. And they're like, what are you going to hang out with Ben and get divorced too? You know, I, I just told him, I, yeah, totally. Totally happened. Really? Totally happened. Boy. Totally happened. I remember my Who friends. Who are you like, hanging out I, with? You know. I, I just know. can't say their names You're on right. air. Yeah, that's true. So I go, I, I go, listen, I just want you to know we're friends. Friends are friends. Right. You know, I have nothing to do with this. I wish you well. I wish her well. We're friends. And he, he you know, he said it. He's like, I really appreciate that. And what was great is, you know, there's it's bipartisan. There's no reason to... You know, I understand the separation of church and state. I understand the separation of belongings. But really, separation of friends just because two people parted didn't make sense to me. Do you see a lot of that, Jade? Um, I've seen the people I work with have had amicable divorces and then really ugly ones um, that are still, especially that were prolonged by COVID. Um, sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the that hurts a lot. And I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Ben, but I think that is unfortunately a common thought in, in people judging divorce. There's mm -hmm. still a stigma, even though it's 2021 and it's, it's just such an odd thing to me. And when I think about your friend saying that, it makes me think what's going to happen if, and when he ever feels like divorce is, is the only option right is he, like <laughs> you, I, you know I, what i mean i stopped being codependent over people a long time ago when yeah. Yeah. when i when i realized that no one is going to advocate for me like me right and when i realized that there was really no point in looking to please the world anymore right you can't that's when I started to build my personal recovery. You know, everyone's recovering from something, whether it's divorce or something in their life. Everyone has some sort of challenge or emotional challenge that happens to them. And unfortunately, you know, divorce is very common. And you're right. It's crazy that what's the what's the divorce rate now? 60 percent. 60 percent. So. While you only have a 40% <laughs> Yeah, chance. yeah, yeah. It's not even like you got a 50-50 shot right. anymore. I mean... It's I, even worse for second marriages. Yeah. But Is it really? Yes. I don't know the exact statistics, but um, yeah. They're, they're really? I think... But people people with their stigma... That, See, that's I'm right in saying I will never get married again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, listen, I think that's a reflection of them when people have what to say about that or their version of their stigma. That's a reflection of them. All right. So oh. we're, 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 we're going we go to go to a break. We got to take a break real quick. And the, the last segment is coming up and we're going to go to our constructive conclusions. No, Jade's we're going to, no, 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 no. We're going to get more advice from Jade. Okay. Well, that's the constructive <laughs> conclusion right there. And Jade, maybe you can give us a little, uh, a funny story. Yes. about Some like dating tragedies. So we'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Ben, I found the greatest invention ever. Okay. I went to take my patio furniture out. Okay. And I realized that last year when I put it all away, I put them in these big zipper bags from Rap America. Yes. <sighs> Life changing. Yes. No, no, no. Rap America is awesome. Tommy, Tommy definitely helped me out on a few different occasions. It he holds actually... patio furniture, wave runners, ATVs. It's weather resistant. 
advanced yeah. protection wrap. Yes. Is economical and a practical choice. So call 516-830-0040 or you can go onto their website, wrap-america.com. All right, since we have a meeting after this in West Islip, yes. I got a place for us to go. Oh, you do? Uh-huh, because I'm, I'm going to be hungry. So we're going to go to Our Little Italy, 636 Union Boulevard, West Islip, New York, 11795. If you want to know, call 631-661-6246. Pickup and delivery are available. Ask for John. Go on www ourlittleitalymenu.com to find out what they have. Oh, I heard they have good chicken parm. Hey, Ben. Yes? I need to talk about solar energy. Okay. I Lighthouse Energy Partners. Go solar and start saving today. Makes it's sense. Owner operated by women. Ooh. We believe in order to close the gender gap in the energy field, we need to showcase key female players and keeping them behind the scenes. Their mission is to serve clients with the highest level of integrity, stability, and respect by viewing their customers as partners. Any energy project you have in mind, call on Lighthouse Energy, www.lighthouseenergypartners.com, 631-275-0091, located in Babylon Village, New York. So I have great news. Since we do this show on divorce, you know, when divorce hits, you, you know, maybe you want to sell the house, maybe you need a CFO, a certificate of occupancy for, occupancy for certain things in the house. So if you're looking to make some home improvements, need an architect, contact certified drafting, selling your home, need permits for existing structures, need a property survey, contact certified drafting. Certified drafting will handle all building department matters, serving Long Island for over 20 years, www.certifieddrafting.com, office number 516 844-0420 or you can email Kevin Daly at certifieddrafting.com Tell him you heard about this from the show from Breaking the Vow you're going to receive a 10% discount We love Kevin I love Kevin I think that's pretty awesome And we're back So Jade let's get to some constructive conclusions and constructive conclusions I mean tell yeah. us some horror stories <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you, what not to do. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> you got to have like some like... L listen. Horrific stories. I, I, as a coach, I do my best not to be judgmental. But there are times when, when I've hung up the sometimes. phone and I'm never judgmental. <laughs> but I've hung, there's times where I hung up the phone and I'm like, ooh, that was a rough one. That's I had think, to happen. Yeah, I mean, so one of the, the services I offer, I run dating profiles for my clients to take that second job, as we talked about, Teresa, off mm -hmm. their hands. Um, and just some of the crazy things I've seen on dating apps um, will just blow your mind and or the things people would say, the way they think it's appropriate to talk. Um, I have a really small world thing that happened to me that's a bit crazy. <gasps> okay. Go for it. So... Um, about five years back, I was an ESL teacher in North Africa in Morocco. Oh, my God. And I went on a date with this uh, very nice Moroccan man, so handsome. And on our second date, he's like, yeah, I was um, I was married to a girl from, from Virginia. And I was like, oh, really? What, what's her name? And I'm not going to say her name now, but he's like, it's da 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 And I go, are you serious? I was like, I went to high school with her. <gasps> um, nice. I actually ended up. We actually were engaged when I when I lived there. Obviously, the relationship ended, but he he was engaged and married to two different girls from New Kent County, Virginia. At wow! The same time? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> different oh. times. Married to her. So he has had had, had he ever no, taken the plunge? Yeah, yeah. Did he ever get married or no? He was married to the first girl from my very small town, and somehow that that's our small world story. So wow. Yes. He's never been to the States, but he was married to one girl and then divorced another girl from the same town. <laughs> so wow. I, you want to know what, what scares me about dating? Uh-huh. Oh, God. So I admit, I will admit to have watched the terrible show, 90 Day Fiance. Oh, stop it. Really? I, 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 not a lot, but <sighs> I've watched it. It's my 
my guilty pleasure because it was almost me. It's, so, it's a train wreck. <laughs> oh, Bobby watches it too. Producer of all producers. <laughs> Then there's like Darcy and Stacy, and they, they <laughs> well, as someone that listen, I, I have strong feelings about but uh, uh, alcohol and substance abuse, and I don't, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a fan of seeing television shows promote someone's downfall. To be honest okay. with you, I think it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. But, but you, know, you the, watch it anyway. I can't now. I can't stand there. I can't. Their their voice is great to me. But then there's. Do you ever see the, the show Catfish? <gasps> That's I know awful. of it. Yeah. Oh my God! And these people like they were in relationships for years. I can yeah. say that I had a, co- a client that was in a relationship. It was a phone relationship, and I'm like, "Well, do you, would you like to meet this person?" My client says, "No, because if I, I, I believe if I meet them, it would almost destroy the fantasy that I have. Yeah. I just would and rather then keep that's it like why- this." That's why I tell people to maybe if you talk or text no more than a week because you're building up this avatar, this fake, this fake identity of what this person is in your mind. And so when you meet them, you're not actually like they're not who you think they are. They're you have that idea in your head instead of actually taking what, like maybe 30 minutes to grab a quick happy hour drink to see if they're actually living up to your expectations. Right. Yes. People get entirely too comfortable with comfort. And what, what I mean by that is, so the mind doesn't want difficulty. The, uh, Socrates has a great set and quote about this, but the, you know, we just, we, we, if we don't get what we want, we suffer. If we, get, if we get what we don't want, we suffer. Even if we get exactly what we want, we still suffer because you can't hold on to it forever. Right. And we have this idea that all the mind wants is the path of least resistance. And we want we want this we want this identity we want this uh, fantasy we want this dream but then what happens is we become so comfortable with that that we don't want to lose that right so when I think what Jay what you're saying t- to me is so strong and powerful because the same thing is, is I can say with people in sobriety or early recovery or people that are trying to navigate through depression or anxiety because you sat and something so comfortable for so long. The idea of moving away from it is so foreign. Yeah, it is. So dating for Teresa, <gasps> it's a little foreign. A little? Teresa, what about your date tonight? What? what Where are you guys what, going? I don't know. Date? I'll figure it out later. How'd you meet him? I, I, I kind of just ran into him. Where, where was I? I was at... Um, I was watching a band's play down at, uh, you know, one of the... One of the places? Yeah, one of the places down by the water. Down by... Not going to say which one. We're not saying that. I know where. Okay, go ahead. You know where. And I didn't realize that he was who he was because I didn't recognize him at How'd first. How'd he look? Good. Okay. Would you call him handsome? Yes. Okay. I would. All right. And then we just got to talk and he's like, hey, let's go out. I said, Okay. Text me. And he did. So we're going out. All right. And this is the one that you knew from before? Yeah. Do you have hesitations because you know of him for so long? No, not at all. I really don't. Because if nothing else, it's still a friendship, right? Yeah. Well, are you going to dinner? Yeah. Where? I don't know yet. I have to pick the place. I don't know where I want to go. Okay. I have a question, Teresa. Yeah. What if he's a bad kisser? <gasps> oh, no. That's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. I agree. Oh, I agree. That is a total deal breaker. I think deal- the worst is the, the dead fish, the tongue. <gasps> the dead- yes. <laughs> I think, so the weird thing, the one thing I do remember asking, like, are you a good kisser? You, I got to say. You asked that question? I have. Really? I, I've asked a lot of questions. Is well, that a, that's not a question I should ask, Jade. I, I, I'm not approving that one, but if it okay. works for you, then I'm happy for you. <laughs> I was. Here's the thing. If no one's ever told you you're a good kisser, you're not a good kisser. Right. Well, that's my point. Like, you know, like, what do you like? Well, you know, I like taking walks in the park and I, you know. Yeah, that's all bullshit. Well, that, whatever it is. But like, you know, like, I like affection. I like to hold hands, uh, you know, kid, sitting on the couch and kissing. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Well, are you a good kisser? 
That's how it came up. Oh, okay. I didn't walk up and be like, hey, oh, you want to be a movie star? Are you good at kissing? What's going on? I didn't even <laughs> do anything like that. When I was younger, maybe I might have. Is that a mirror in I'm your sure, pocket? <laughs> I am sure you did. <laughs> I was, you know what? I was so silly, though. I, I'm so sorry. You still are. Yeah, I, I'm better. I've matured. Mm-hmm. I have matured. But, like, yeah, no, I, I remember saying, "Are you? so do you think you're a good kisser? And they always said, yeah. And I'm like, well, you know what the weird thing is? Nobody's ever said, no. I'm, to be honest, I am terrible at kissing. I don't what? Think, no one's ever said that. No one's going to tell you if they're bad at it. Like, oh, yeah, that's true. You no just, one's going to be like, to be honest with you, Ben, I know you wanted to date me, but I am, like, absolutely terrible in bed. Yeah, no one says that. No one's going to say that. No. I might have said that. You probably did. I have. In your younger <laughs> days, you probably did. Well, I don't have to say things like that now, but yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. <laughs> in your younger days, I, it wouldn't shock me. Jade, I, I, I got to be honest. This is one of the greatest shows. Yeah. I, I love that you were so relaxed and so friendly and so... Um, so involved with your clients and how you help them. Yes. You know, uh, can you just give us give us some information on how people listening can get in touch with you? Yeah. So my website, datingafterdivorce.com. We have our services. We do free dating advice um, via articles or our weekly newsletter. Every Thursday it goes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty active on social media. It's at Dating After Divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll see my, my mug on there and yeah, I'm happy to help out with date coaching. If it's not going well for you, dating profile. Oh, believe me when I tell you, I am so, you are going to be my best friend. (laughs) Yeah. No, you're getting texts right after the show. (laughs) I I can't wait. You guys are awesome. You are getting texts. You're going to get, you're going to get pictures later, videos. Yeah. Yeah. If if it doesn't go well, you're going to get a picture. I'm going to get a picture. Can you believe what this blah, 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 blah did? (laughs) Do you know what he said? Yeah. I do have a question for you guys because I was just talking about date attire. Teresa, what's your opinion on cargo shorts? My opinion on cargo shorts? As long as they are not hanging down to your knees, I'm okay okay with it as long as it's presentable. I'm wearing cargo shorts, so let's be nice. You're wearing cargo shorts? Yeah, he's wearing (laughs) cargo shorts. I'm not getting dressed up. As long as you're not wearing them, you know... Listen, I got out of bed and I got here. <laughs> I had to get to the studio on time, <laughs> which I did. You did. You're right. <laughs> now, all right. Well, so, you. should I not like cargo shorts? No. The only reason, the only thing I'm saying about that, Ben, it's totally okay. You're wearing them. Thank it's you. for a date. I don't think men should be showing up on a date in cargo shorts and flip flops. Because I, I'm sorry. Flip flops, a cargo shorts, and a white beater sh- t-shirt. You mean? <laughs> I mean, unless you're on this. Unless you're on the sand, I don't think it's okay. Like I don't know. I, I feel very stain. strongly about Hell. that. I wouldn't let my male client show up in, in that to, to a <laughs> that is so great. I mean, but if it's presentable and you're going, like, to a beach scene to watch a band. That's uh, different. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Huh. Mm-hmm. All right. So no to future self, if ever. No, no cargo shorts. No cargo shorts, <laughs> white beaters, and flip-flops. <laughs> Too late. All right, guys. <laughs> What a great show. This Jade, was fantastic. Thanks for coming on. You are going to be back again soon, correct? Yes. I'd love to. It was oh, a pleasure. Yes. What an awesome Excellent. Time. All right, folks. And we are out. I am Benny, the Life Coach. And I'm Teresa D. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>